Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper. In this video, I want to talk about campfires. First, I want to talk about why campers make campfires, and then I want to give you some tips that uh, will make your campfire experience more enjoyable. The first reason for making a campfire is to cook your meals. You can grill steak and toast tortillas, roast corn, potatoes, onions, and many other foods in tinfoil, fry fish, bacon, eggs, and many other foods in the frying pan, and boil soups, stews, beans, and many other foods in the pot. Whether or not you cook your meals on the campfire, you always have to make s'mores if you have children. I think there's a law that requires s'mores on a camping trip when children are present. A second reason for making a campfire is to produce a little bit of heat on those cool mornings and evenings. In addition to warming the body, a campfire also warms your soul and makes it possible to camp in early spring and late fall. A campfire also provides light for your campsite, especially on those early spring, late fall evenings when the sun sets around 5 or 6 o'clock. And finally, a campfire just makes your campsite complete. You can spend hours staring into the flickering flames and smelling the sweet aroma of the campfire. Now let me share a few tips that will make your campfire experience more enjoyable. First of all, recognize that campfires can be dangerous and remind others in your party of this fact also. According to a large national study, campfire burns was the number one cause of camping-related emergency room admission. And a large number of the patients admitted to these emergency rooms were children that were playing carelessly around the campfire. So when you camp with young children, you must be especially watchful to avoid injury. The state of Michigan has installed these ADA-compliant steel and concrete-clad fire rings, which are much safer than the standard low-level fire rings. Another major cause of serious campfire injuries is using gasoline and other accelerants to start the fire. Don't even think about it. Before departing on your camping trip, make a fire starter kit. Don't wait until you arrive at your campsite to begin looking for fire making materials. Other campers may have already collected most of these materials and what's left may be too wet to use for starting fires. In a pinch, you could use a few briquettes of matchlight charcoal, but this is an expensive way to start your fires. We collect twigs that fall from the trees in our yard and break them up so that we can use them as kindling. I pack these twigs in a small soft side cooler along with shavings from my garage workshop, paper from my computer room, and a few butane lighters. As soon as we arrive at our campsite and find some firewood, we're ready to start our campfire. My third tip is to find good firewood that splits easily and burns hot. All state and federal parks now forbid cutting standing trees and many forbid removing downed trees. Furthermore, many parks forbid bringing firewood into the campground that was cut more than 25 miles away. Consequently, most campers will have to buy firewood. Many campgrounds sell large bundles of good quality firewood, but a significant number do not. The best firewood to buy, if you can find it, is U.S. Department of Agriculture certified, heat-treated, pest-free oak and hickory. But some parks sell pine, 
that leaves a sticky residue on your food and on your cookware. Some sell sweet gum and ironwood that is impossible to split, and some sell elm that is impossible to split or burn. Before departing on your camping trip, go to the internet and write down the names and telephone numbers of large grocery stores, Dollar General stores, and firewood dealers located near your destination. When you arrive at your destination, check the firewood that is available at the park. But if it's not good, you can call local stores to see if they have any firewood. Hopefully, you'll be able to find some good firewood in the area. After finding the firewood, you'll have to split it to make stove wood. Typically, each piece is about 4 to 6 inches in diameter and around 15 to 20 inches long. For cooking fires, you'll have to split each piece many times until each piece is about the size of a large pencil. When the pieces are large, you may need a splitting wedge, but as they get smaller, you can use a side splitting technique. Eventually, each large piece of firewood will be reduced down to about 20 small pieces of stove wood. I store my stove wood in this small bin so that I can easily move it from the car to the cooking area as needed. When you're not cooking, you'll need to make a special effort to keep your firewood dry. We keep our firewood in the car with our tools and with our food. To start a fire, place about four pieces of crumpled paper into the fire ring and then light a fifth piece of paper and put that on top of the other four. Then cover this with twigs from your fire starter bag. As the fire begins to start, begin to add larger pieces of split stove wood. You'll have a good fire going in no time at all. If you plan to do some cooking, you'll have to let the fire burn down and then use some technique for maintaining a low level of heat for a prolonged period of time. The early method for controlling the heat was to set up a crossbar with hangers of varying lengths. When the fire was hot, use a short hanger, and when the fire was cooler, use a longer hanger. Dutch oven cookers count the number of briquettes on the top of their oven and at the bottom of their oven. A few recent books have recommended the keyhole method in which the main campfire is built out in the larger part of the fire ring and then embers are moved under the grate as needed. But the heat of the fire can make this very difficult to do sometimes. We maintain the heat of our fire by using just a few small pieces of firewood at a time. As mentioned previously, Roasting marshmallows is absolutely necessary when you have children. For best results, hold the marshmallows about six inches above the flame. This way, the marshmallow will get crispy yellow on the outside and soft all the way on the inside. If you hold your marshmallow lower down in the flame, it will catch fire so that the outside will be burnt and the inside will not be cooked. When the time comes to go to bed or leave your campsite, you should extinguish your fire. Do so by pouring water over it, stirring it, then pouring water over it again and stirring it again. And hopefully you will completely extinguish the fire. Wear gloves when extinguishing your fire because if you don't, the steam from the fire can easily scald you. So if you don't have other plans for the evening, throw a couple of logs on the campfire, sit back, and enjoy smelling its distinctive aroma, listening to its faint sounds, feeling its comforting warmth, and watching its dancing flames for many hours. <laughs>